Octane Render 2025 just landed for Blender, and this isn't your average performance boost update. Most people think Octane updates are just about speed or stability, but this one, it changes how you render, how you texture, and it's built for realism straight inside of Blender. In this video, I'll break down what's new, why it matters, and how you can start using it without getting overwhelmed. You know how most renders look technically correct, but not photogenic? Octane just fixed that with its new lens effects. This new system simulates real world camera lens behavior, so you get actual bokeh, optical vignetting, chromic aberration, and even lens distortion based on real world lenses modeled after Zeiss, Canon, and Nikon. Even a 100 millimeter magnifying glass. You're not just faking it in post, these are physically accurate lens simulations built into the render. If your goal is to make something feel and look like it was shot on a lens, this is it. Next, the new decal system. If you've ever tried adding stickers or dirt or paint chips or something like that in Blender, you know it's a pain. We gotta add extra geometry, messy UVs, endless text juggling around. Well, Octane 2025 fixes that. Now you can project decals directly onto your models. No UV hacks, no geometry tricks. You can rotate them, scale them, stack them, and they just look clean and they work fast. It's the fastest way to add decals where it matters. Pro tip, when you're placing decals in Blender with Octane, toggle on the decal wireframe overlay to line things up perfectly. Makes a huge difference. Let's talk materials. The Chaos Texture just got a massive update. You can now distort it with noise, randomize tile rotations and control distribution mode more precisely. This means no more repeating patterns on no more flat surfaces. And there's a Vectron texture displacement. This lets you sculpt Vectron objects in real time using texture maps. If you've ever wanted to do some erosion or cracks or organic surface, where without heavy geometry, this is your tool. And the best part is procedural and memory efficient. Quick win for anybody doing animation here. Blender's reset attributes are here and they fix one of the most annoying problems. If you ever had an animated mesh and you've seen the texture start sliding or warping around, that's because your texture coordinates were tiled to moving vertices. Now Octane can lock those textures to the original vertex position so the surfaces deform, but the texture stays put. Cleaner movement, cleaner shaders. The 2025 update brings major speed improvements for Apple Silicon users. If you're on an M3 or an M4 chip, you're gonna get 1.5 times faster renders, especially in those scenes where you use non-triangle -triangle geometry like scattering or SDF volumes. And if you've ever used Octane Render Network, I've got a bonus for you. I'm giving away credits so that you can use it on your next project. No local bottlenecks, no noisy fans. Just send that render off to the network and let it do all the rendering. Pro tip, use the render network when you wanna test out lighting or complex materials. It just saves you a lot of time and it frees up your machine. Everything I just covered, we broke it down even further inside my Blender Octane community. It's where I host live calls, where I share project files, and we have a more advanced workflow to help artists like you get better faster. If you're serious about leveling up your Octane skills inside of Blender, this is where the real work happens. You can join anytime, links down below. And honestly, once I saw what Octane could do, I started rethinking every node I use. There's one in particular, in particular that blew my mind, and it's the Octane Dirt node. Cycles taught me how to build shaders, but this one node made me feel the surface. Let me show you what I mean. 